Hello there, it's Colin from Rockfin Publications Scotland here and uh, we're backstage at the O2 Academy with Mr Jepson. Hello. Uh, from Newbert Sons. How are you doing today? Alright, good, yeah. Nice Great to, to see you nice again. Nice to be here again, mate. Yeah, Great to see absolutely. you. How's the tour going? I know it's only day three. Uh, Ireland, yeah. Ireland and then Scotland tonight. Yeah, Dublin, Belfast. Yeah, um, yeah I mean... So far, so good. I mean, we've um, we came out, uh, you know, off the back of last year off for Hard Rock Hell, yeah, um, and just great Christ show. yeah, Christmas. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we had a great time there, and um, you know, Christmas break. So it's a little bit like you know, getting back on the horse. You know, wondering if uh, you know the hangovers really cleared away really properly. But um, but no, so far so good. I mean, Dublin was you know one of those shows that uh, you know you feel like first show in it's always kicking off the cobwebs a bit and yeah. we suffered a bit from the, the ferry and the and all that so I was kind of on stage sort of trying not to be sick most of the time to be honest I've got to be honest but but you know I, I, I treat these things with a kind of pinch of salt really I mean yeah. you know when you're a touring band you you know it's um, everything sent to try you you know what I mean so so that was cool so you know and, and Belfast last night was kind of like we I think we hit our stride again and um, so yeah, so far so good. Yeah, great. You see, great bunch of people, yeah. you know. So. And then Bonnie Scotland tonight. Bonnie Scotland. Always love coming back to Glasgow, you know. Yeah, spent many years here um, yeah. in various bands, as you know. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. You've good. played, I think, probably every venue uh, here. There's very few. I don't think there is a venue I haven't played in, in, in Glasgow. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the last time I was here, I was in Gun, and we, mm -hmm. I think, we sold it out, you know, yeah. as, as a headline act. Yeah. So. so yeah, it holds a very special place um, for me, Glasgow. You know, it, it, I think Scotland, even back to the early Angels days, was really one of the first, specifically one of the first, in Glasgow, was one of the first towns that really embraced us. Yeah. You know, there was, you know, there was very, you know, there was southwest down in Cardiff, mm -hmm. you know, Glasgow, and, you know, Wolverhampton, funny enough, so it's kind of like we had every yeah. sort of, again, it's a country covered sort of yeah. thing. But, um, so I've got a lot of fond memories yeah. of playing here. And then, well, then Joe just took over everything. It certainly did, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. yeah. Fun times, fun oh, times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, how are Steel Panther treating you? Great, I mean, I mean, you know, we're only three days in, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like we're just, it's hellos and, yeah. you know, handshakes and, and uh, bump into them after the show and all that sort of thing. So yeah, so far so good, you yeah. know, I mean, I, I, I saw Panther play um, at download a couple of years ago, yeah. sort of, well, I think they even played the Little Angels uh, were playing the second stage down yeah, there, so yeah. I caught a little bit of them. But I wasn't, I'm not really fully aware of everything they do, you know, so I watched it last night and I didn't think it was hilariously funny. Yeah. I mean, it is um, a comedy show with good musicians. Well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, you know, you can't knock, um, I was looking at it like this, I think, you know, any band that can kind of get themselves to a position where they're playing places like this must be doing something right, you know. Um, it's very difficult to, to achieve this level of success. It really is, having been through a few times myself, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, so, if you can get to this level and you're getting a great reaction from, from, a, from a, an audience who clearly love what you're doing, yeah. um, then that's hard to knock, not that I ever would. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, it is, it is a specialist thing, you know, it is a, I think it's, it's kind of a bit like Marmite, I think, this kind of thing, you do either love it or hate oh, okay. it, um, and it's quite divisive in a way, but for what I saw, I just thought it was funny, and I, and I thought the guys are, fun. I mean, Satchel, what a great guitar player, you know, yeah. all of them great players, and um, so yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. cool, yeah. Good, good. Uh, now, can you tell us how Wayward Sounds are progressing, uh -huh. you know, into... You know, the album's out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you done Hard Rock Hill last mm -hmm. year. Uh, you know, what do you feel you're you're going in the right direction? You know, like the fans are definitely opening out. Uh -huh. uh, you're definitely getting a, a larger. Yeah. Uh, mm. you know, more people want to mm. see you live. You do put on a great show. Thank highly you. recommended. But you've always done it. Mm. <laughs> you know, no matter what band, you know, mm. you can do it. So you know. Thank you. How do you feel it's going? I'm absolutely delighted with the way it's going I really am you know I mean to sort of reach the right old age of 50 like I am you know and sort of being yet another band that's starting out that's quite daunting I've got to be honest yeah I um, mean it was from the moment the whole thing was suggested as an idea from you know with, with Frontiers and Serafina and those those great guys at, at that label and and it did take me a lot to sort of go shall I <laughs> shall I do it again because it's a lot of work yeah. um, and not only that is it's you know I, I make no bones about it, you know, when you write music and you're creative as, uh, as a musician, specifically because I've always regarded myself as a, kind of like a songwriter first and a singer second and a performer third in a way, oh, okay. um, but it's, it's really important for me to, 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 to create something that I'm really proud of that I think 
hopefully people will like. And it's heartbreaking when it doesn't work, you know, and that's for lots of reasons. And I'm not saying it hasn't always not worked, but I think there has been a, there was a big period in my life when I was pursuing a solo career where it was a str real struggle. You know, even though I was writing music all the time and I was touring, I didn't have the financial backing. It was difficult to sort of get anyone interested, and you sort of left scratching your head as to wonder what to do next. So that's why I kind of ended up, I think, working with other people like Fast Eddie Clark, you know, God rest his soul, and. Um, and various other people, you know, obviously the DOC cycle thing and all the rest of it, but it is a big decision to, to, to fully commit to a creative process like the Wayward Sons, you know, Wayward Sons. I don't do it lightly. This is the last band I'll ever be in, you know, seriously. Right, okay. you know, so if this doesn't work, I probably will never do another band again. I think this is working. Mm -hmm. um, early signs are great. I mean, what you do is you make an album, you put the right, first of all, you put the right people around you. I mean, I think making music's about the people. I don't think it's about the business. I think it's about the people. The business is just something that happens to the music and the people yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Um, so I, you, know, you make the album, you, you, my whole approach to it is you put the music out and you hope to God people are gonna like it. Yeah. But you have no idea whether they're going to or not. You have a sort of rough guess. Yeah. And it all rests in whether you think you've done something worthy. Uh, and so, you know, once the album came out, we started getting these great reactions and, you know, when, I mean, specifically when we started putting out the videos, which was a bit, again, a bit of a risk, yeah. you know, a little bit of a risk. Yeah. But um, we put out until the end and we were immediately getting the, the phone started lighting up from people like, you know, John Norman at, you know, Planet Rock and we've got a lot of magazines all sort of going, we want to cover this, you know, and then I got some, we got some requests for some summer festivals, which we ended up playing like Rambling Man. I was like, hang on a minute, this is all happening a bit. I just didn't ex anticipate yeah, it, yeah. you know. Um, so, but it was a delight, you know, because all of a sudden you're thinking, hang on, maybe we have got this right a little yeah, bit, you know. Yeah. And, and it's just had a very slow, gentle, but firm uh, lift to it yeah. that we're just enjoying. And the way I look at it now is that I don't want to force this down anyone's throat. I want people to like it because they think it's good. Yeah. And I want it to rest on its own merits. I want it to be merit based all the time. Um, and if the band excite people to come up to see us play, then that's all I, I care about. Yeah. Um, but it's about a kind of integrity for me. You've got, to, you've got to stick to your guns, you've got to do all the things I used to do when I was a kid, but it's more, more sharply focused now. Right, you know? okay. So um, I think you know where we are right now, after that flush of sort of excitement from summer of last year, and specifically from the release of the album, you know, it's a lot further down the line than anticipated, I've got to say. Yeah. So um, to be Definitely playing... Definitely going in the right direction. Without a doubt. And you know, I don't feel any less ambitious than I did when I was 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I really don't. You know, right. I, feel, I still feel I've got a lot to say. And, I, and um, these guys in the band, you know, they're 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 just unbelievable people. And they, they give me that license. They're good hearted people and they they support me and I support them. And, you know, we, we, we think collectively that the music's got something that we're, we're really pleased about. We just, Hope we can carry on and carry on. Yeah. How did you all get together? Like, you know, where did the who approached him? Well, it was it, it all came from really from Serafino and Frontiers approaching me, oh. and initially it was going to be a whole different group of people. It was going to be um, a lot of, some American musicians. That was initially oh, the right. initial the initial conversation, but that didn't work out. I didn't want that to happen. Oh. Eventually, it all sort of didn't work, and so I went back to the, the label and said, "Look, you know, if we're going to do something, because Serafino and Mario were um, the two guys that run the, the label." Um, were absolutely adamant they wanted to work with me. So I was like, I haven't been in that position for years, not since yeah. Bonnie or were after the Angels and all that. So I was like, okay, well, if they're enthusiastic, then I ought to be, sort yeah. of thing, you know. So I went back to them and said, look, you know, if we're gonna do this, I need to put the right team around me. It's gotta be people I trust, it's gotta be people I think I can make music with, because yeah. if we don't have that, we don't have anything. Yeah. So they literally trusted me, they went, look, go and find who you want. So I'd known Nick, the bass player for years, he was in Chrome Molly, Little Angels Open for Chrome Molly, one of the first bands we ever opened for. Yeah. So that was very cool. He jumped in straight away and said, you know, I'd love to do that. Because I produced a couple of Crow Molly records and we'd got on really well. Um, like I said, I've known him for years anyway. Uh, Dave Kemp, it's a bit of an easy one to understand that one. Me and Dave have been working together for years on various projects, so that was cool. Uh, Phil, I, I, I caught, I, I, I sort of saw him play um, for the Down and Outs with Joe. Um, at uh, the High Voltage Festival a few years oh, ago, okay, yeah. and um, I just thought, what a great, what a great style, you know that. Phil's one of those drummers that doesn't just he embodies everything to do with drumming. He doesn't just oh I love to I want to play like Bonham, you know he loves all the, the players, you know he brings an indie sensibility, you know, 
a pop sensibility, a rock sensibility to his playing. He's just a very musical drummer, and those are the guys that I like the best, you know, on the drum stool. So he was approached him. We had one meeting. I had never met the guy before. Um, we sat down. We had a coffee, and it was like by the end of the meeting we were best buds and he was in sort of yeah, thing you know yeah. but the key to it really i think in many ways was sam uh, the guitar player because every great rock band needs that yeah. brilliant guitar player um and i still can't get away from the fact i love the sound of a guitar played like that you yeah. know what I mean? yeah. and he's a young kid you know sam's really distinctive oh yeah he's not even 30 you know and he's um he's He's got a very, very wise head on his shoulders, um, and I've met him when I was producing his band from Leeds, The Trees and Kings, uh, who were an indie sort of um, alternative rock band. Yeah. I just loved his style. It was the best of everything to do with classic playing and new, um, the new modern take on guitar playing. So I asked him, and he was like, the band actually were coming to a close, really. His, his Trees and Kings were finishing, they, they didn't want to carry on. So it kind of worked quite well. Um, as soon as Sam was in the mix, it was like, it, what could have been bunch of old guys <laughs> trying to make old music if you like yeah. which I don't think it would have been but I think we would have that it wouldn't have had as much of an edge to it if we didn't have sound yeah. because he's got a, a slightly different approach you know so and it worked you know it was beautiful you know we had one rehearsal I got him down to the, the um, to real world studios in Bath uh, Peter Gabriel's studio and we set up and we just played yeah. So brought, brought, brought the youth into the band. Yeah, I mean, I brought some ideas in, and we were off. You know, I think after the we had two days in that that rehearsal room, and we, at the end of those two days, we'd written. Well, there were seven basic bones of, of seven songs, of which all of those ended up on the album. Yeah. So that was enough indication to me that it was working. You know, so. Have you signed a multi album deal? Yeah. Frontiers. Yeah. Yeah, we've done a four four album deal. It's all to do. With, it's all optioned. You know, it depends on what. You know, it's, you know, people will say, oh man, I've signed a four album deal, but the reality is that isn't the truth. What you do is you sign for a one album, then they see what you, how the yeah. record does, and then they, they, they yeah. option the, rec the, the next record. But essentially, if everything goes according to plan, we should make four albums with them. And I, would, I will stick with them because they are a fantastic bunch of people. Good. How do you think it's changed? You mentioned Polydor. Uh, I remember working, I started in record shops, and I yeah, also yeah, yeah. remember the Polydor reps coming in. Yeah, yeah. Where, you know the, the box sets, uh, and, and you know they pushed and pushed. Obviously, the record company have not got the money anymore no. to do that. Uh, or the balls, it, actually. Yeah, probably. I'll be honest. To put, to put the money into it, because yeah. uh, there was a box set for every track of uh, God. Oh no, the little, you know, and it's, I've still got them all sitting in the house, boxed up. Oh, and, no. You know why did that stop? Because there was nothing better than getting a vinyl. Box set, you open it, you got this, you got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Where now, you know, okay, I'll download it on my phone, I'll download it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, it's not the same. And I know yeah. vinyl is coming back, mm. but do you ever think that like Frontiers will get behind bands again that will push it and there'll be all this merchandise and all these different formats that you can buy things in? Or do you feel that those days are just gone? No, I don't think they're gone, I just think it's different. I think, for instance, we are working with um, a, ba a company called Band Stores, who are a merchandising company. Uh -huh. And I went to those guys, I mean, in fact, Nick, who's in, who's in the band, it's, it's his company, he, oh, he, yeah. he runs that company, but they run the stores for so many rock bands and, and what well, acts, music bands, you know, music acts all across the globe of all different genre bases. Um, and I sort of said to Nick, look, you know, I want this to be kind of old school. There's no point trying to pretend we're part of the, the new run of things. You know, what we are is, I know that my fans out there want picture discs, want the vinyl, love the idea of getting the exclusive t-shirt, want the, the deluxe edition. I said, because that's where we come from. And also, I've noticed that there's a lot of young kids liking that. A lot of kids yeah. carrying vinyl around on their arms in the streets now. You know, yeah. you, go, you go into urban outfitters and they're selling records. Yeah. It's cool, apparently, you know, I mean, so I don't think it's, I don't think it's disappeared. I think it's changed. I think a label like Frontiers don't have, they don't have the desire to be that kind of label. Right. But I don't yeah. think that's the thing that they should be. What, what, what's brilliant about Frontiers is they, they do have the balls. They have the desire and the, the belief in the music because they really, really love it. Mm -hmm. And so that's at the heart of their business is that they love the music they're selling. Yeah. The biggest problem with the major labels is that they lost the heart. People that run the major labels now are bean counters and lawyers. It's not populated by people that believe in music. No. It really isn't. It's no. about the bottom line. I mean, can you believe that the biggest label in the world in Universal 
it was the last time they signed a rock band really. I mean, okay, Stone Broken have got a license deal at um, Spine Farm and that's fantastic and I wish them the best of luck, but it's few and far between. Um, and actually they should hang their heads in shame because there is very little support out there for our form of music. And let's be honest, it's made absolutely tons of money for an awful lot of people over the years. It's music that will never die. No, it won't. Uh, and just certain yeah. people that, that want it. Absolutely, but you, you know, and actually, you know what the, the most amazing thing about the last year touring with Inglorious was is that I haven't felt a feeling in the room of every gig that we did like that since the early days of Little Angels when that whole new second wave of what they called the second wave of British heavy metal yeah. that we were supposedly part of, which yeah. we were never, but we were never a heavy metal band, were we? But, but the movement in the, in the yeah, country, yeah. and I haven't felt that feeling until last year. Yeah. It really felt like the audience have reclaimed the music somehow. And I think it's kind of gone back underground. And I think that's where it thrives. I think people, what's wonderful about the internet is we don't have to be told anything anymore, do we? No. You can choose what you want to yeah. listen to. You can watch you can. whatever you want. Exactly, so I think what's wonderful about the way that the, this burgeoning rock scene that's happening now is it's all built off the back of the fans. It's not built off the back of a record label telling you what you should or should not buy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the change. So. What the little labels need to do, the independent labels, which they're doing, actually are doing a real great job. It's not just Frontiers, it's Earache, it's, you know, it's, there are other labels yeah, out there yeah. doing stuff, including Spine Farm, to be yeah. fair. Um, what they're doing is they're reacting to that and they're providing the possibility that those bands can have a support. The biggest thing that's been missing in the last 10, 15, 20 years is there's been absolutely no support, no inward investment from the record labels. And so, but then you look back at the 70s and labels like Stiff Records and yeah. all these little labels, you know, they were the vanguard of that movement of punk and the, the, the post-new wave thing yeah. and all that. So I think what you see is it's kind of cyclical, you know. Um, and what I hope is, is that the scene now that it is, of which we're part of, can grow and grow and grow and encourage a, a large scale uh, audience to want to take part properly again in it. And it, the, the sign, early signs are very good. Yeah. Well, that's what we're trying to do in Rock Fiend is keep rock alive, that's our model, yeah. keeping rock alive and uh, we're just doing anything to try and you know, get it. Yeah. So what's the plans for you for the rest of the year? Well, a lot more touring. We've got, we have got a headline tour booked for for April, right. but we're not. We can't at the moment because the way it works with these sorts of things is you get kind of embargoed by the main band that you're opening for, so yeah. you don't. Not that I think anyone it would have nicked any tickets out of this tour at all. I think, but that's just the way it works. It's a kind of it's a political thing. It's yeah. the way it works. So when this tour is over, we'll be announcing our headline tour, which will be will be in April, May time. Um, full UK. Uh, full UK. Yeah. Um, it's not a huge tour, but. In just exactly the same way that I want to take this easy, mm -hmm. I want to do the best things, the best job we can. I don't want to over, I don't want to over egg the pudding. I don't want to, you know, force it too hard. I want to yeah. take it as, as slowly and enjoy that that ride, build it up. Um, we're just talking to festivals, so it looks like we're gonna have a few festivals this year. That's looking Excellent. really good. Um, and we've got a big tour, a big European tour planned, um, opening for another band, which we can't talk about yet. Which okay. looks like that's going to happen, which will be sort of autumn time. You know, and then there's a plan to do another UK run as headliners November-ish time. Right. So we have a, a long plan. Yeah. You know? I mean, it was never about anything other than that. I mean, I sort of said to the agent and you know Steve, who's my co-manager and agent, yeah. and I said to Steve, look, you know, I want this to work, you know, but we've got to. And he said, well, you know, it's all about building this slowly, yeah. building your currency, becoming, you know, becoming a, a valued act. Yeah. Um, and you do that from, like I say, you do that from merit. You know. So. Excellent. Do you have any message for your fans out there? I think the message really is is just um, just how blown away I've been about with the support. You know, it, you know, I've been around the block, as you know, um, and for people to keep coming back and um, wanting to take part in it is absolutely mind blowing, really. Yeah. Um, You've still got the voice, though. <laughs> you can still put on a show, which a lot Thank of people, you. Yeah. you know, when we're hitting fifty, you know, as you say, uh, there's not a lot of people. Can, can still do it. No, and, it's, it, and it is tough, you know. Yeah. It is tough, you know. But I mean, I like I say earlier on, I, I don't feel any different really. Yeah. My knees might hurt a little bit more, and you know, I might need a bit more sleep and stuff like that. But the reality is, you know, you, you know, I'm a lifer. You know, music's what I do, and yeah. um, and for good or bad, and sometimes you have to sort of just like, it, all it is is about rolling with the punches, and you know, you know, accepting the fact that things change, and just keep keeping going. You know, um, and I still feel. 
I still feel ambitious enough to believe that this band can go the full distance, I really do. The great thing about the scene at the moment, and the great thing about music in general, which the internet has really been massively part of, is there's absolutely no ageism anymore. Uh -huh. you, know, you can be any age and make music, because your audience is there if it wants to be. There is not this drip-fed thing that we used to have. Um, and I think rock fans are very discerning, they know when something's good and bad. Yeah. And I don't think they really care whether you're 50 or whether you're 25, but it's just whether it turns them on, you know. It works. So, yeah, so thank you for the support. Excellent. Thanks, right. Toby. Thank you, man. Take care. And you.